afternoon, everybody. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. Hello. And with I'm us today, special guest. Oh, yes. Sorry. No, that was jump my fault. Jump the, jump the queue. Jump in there. I'll, I'm ju- I'll just take over. Uh, welcome to the Dice Tower. Uh, what do we call this? The top 10. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here with a very special guest, Tom Vassell and Z Garcia. I'm Scott Alden. Thank you for, board game thank you for having us. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks, guys, for coming. It's on such well, short notice, too. I mean, it's some roundabout way. It's not necessarily incorrect since my first reviews were on board game geek way back in the day so we're still what was your first review what was your first review do you remember my first review was time's up actually time's up it was just a little dinko review my first full review was duel of ages because i was so excited about the game your favorite game of all time like is it still yeah i remember remember that i remember top 100 but i still liked it but yeah so for those of you who don't know, Aldi or Scott Alden is the president, CEO, and founder of BoardGameGeek.com, which is the world's fifth largest – no, it's the largest board game website. Could be the fifth largest. I don't know. Well, Reddit's pretty bigger. large. Reddit and Facebook are pretty large. Yeah, I don't think anyone calls them board game websites, though. I, uh, no. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. I appreciate that. Take it. I'll take it. Looking through Facebook uh, – also, uh, Ollie was on the, the forefront of starting smaller internet-based conventions because Board Game Geek is definitely the first one to do that I, that I know of for board games. There's a lot now that got together, but back in the day when you started that, there was a few yeah, small... We had, we had 200 people first time, first year. Man. Well, it, it was really... I was, like, worried that people weren't going to come because it was, like... Would you go to a convention with a bunch of yahoos you met on some website you don't even you don't even know? That's what that's what people told me. They're like, I'm afraid to come because I don't know who am I going to meet on like the internet. Yeah. Like the trusting was not there, you know. Oops. Yeah. Get a call. Let me turn that off. Well, anywho, folks, we are we are talking about exploration games today. Um, so, how do you all define exploration games? Uh, correctly. <laughs> I looked at the BGG thing. <laughs> yeah, baby. That was a right. that was I a mean, why, why, why try to come up with my own uh, definition? Should I read it? Do you want me to read it? All right. Yeah. Well. well hey, man. It's your web page. <laughs> uh, exploration. Let's see here. Oh, not space. By the way, I didn't notice this, but um, we added space exploration to separate that apparently from exploration. Uh, can we find it here? Do I have any space exploration? Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. It'll be one big missing one because they decided to split it, Tom. No, I didn't actually use that this time. I used my own intuition. Okay, here we go. Exploration games often encourage players to discover and search new areas and territories for particular objects or goods and or to search for people to become trading partners with. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's... So that's what I did to some degree. Yeah. I, I did games where in the game you are finding new things. Whatever that's, it may that's, be, that's good. Yeah, you're finding something new. Sometimes it's thematic. Sometimes it's mechanic-wise, yeah, uh, mechanism-wise, but finding yeah. new things. I think I'm pretty loose in my definition. I mean, well, I, I think for me it's the uh, – I try to prioritize a sense of discovery – that's the main thing, and that that's something like that would feature a lot of discovery, you know, whether that's flipping a tile or reading from something or just, like, visiting a new area somewhere. Yeah. It's that idea of a sense of wonder that comes from discovering some place or something you haven't seen before. And um, so games that featured a lot of that tended to trend a little higher on my list, you know. Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll see. I, I think... The, one of the things is we – this has not been that long since we've done this list, but my list is very different because the number of games that utilize this has really gone up in the past few years. This is definitely one of my newer-leaning lists yeah. over anything else I've done because so many of these games, I feel, have been coming out lately. Yeah, it's one of my favorite topics. I was excited to pick it. All righty. Categories, well, I should say. Well, here hey. we go. We're going to start with, we'll go from worst to, no, never mind. Uh, let's just get started on numbers. My number 10 is a cooperative game, and actually a decent amount of these are cooperative games. I guess cooperative cooperation and, and 
exploration, you know, that sense of discovery, I guess, go hand in hand. But my number 10 is a game called Dead Men Tell No Tales, in which you are pirates. You are looting a ship. Said ship is on fire. You are exploring rooms. So you you don't know what the inside of the ship looks like. You, you jump onto it. And then as you are discovering what the different rooms look like, looking for treasure to jump out of there, you flip over tiles. On the ship are baddies, like, you know, evil skeletons and all that stuff. And you have to do some fighting and then, again, steal their loot, carry it out, take a breather out there to regenerate your strength and jump back in fighting some more, digging out, you know, um, some more loot. I really like the sense of uh, growth that comes with this. You know, you start with being able to z- to see just the back of the ship. And as you are flipping tiles and finding exits and entrances, then you, of course, discover... Uh, what the, I don't know, quote-unquote dungeon, I guess, looks like. Uh, there's also ex- uh, explosions that happen in there sometimes with barrels of, um, like, powder kegs. And they'll and the wreck... Balls going off. Yeah, yeah, well, there's actually, like, there's the ship is on fire, so sometimes when the temperature rises to a certain point, the kegs of, uh, of gunpowder explode, wrecking a, a whole room, a whole section of the ship. And so you can no longer pe- walk through that. Mm. So I really like this one. I think it's very thematic. It's engaging. I, I just enjoy the uh, the discovery in it quite a bit. Is My someone number 10, reprinting this? I don't think so, yeah, man. It was a minion I, game, wasn't it? Minion games. Yeah, I haven't heard of anybody bringing it back, but this is a really cool game. Uh, number yeah, ten, know. Dead Men Tell No Tales. I've never played it, but now I'm going to because I've been meaning to. It's cool. I was I'm always sitting there and waiting. It. Yeah, I'm sure somebody will. Well, Manhattan projects are still sitting there too. Yeah, it's just That'll an interesting come thing. Back too. All right, well, all right, Aldi, what do you got? This is a this is one of those games that I it was Grail back when I first heard about it, and they only made two hundred copies by hand. Like it was one of those Essen releases <laughs> the back in the day. Elitism starts now. <laughs> do you remember? Is that an elitism thing? Is it Kai? But this was like in two thousand two. Two thousand two. All right, let me think. What was the next? Uh, two thousand seven. Sorry, two thousand. You know, I'm not sure. The, let me look at the original date. Um, two thousand four. Was the original release, so think to S in two thousand four, like two hundred copies. White. It was in a white box with a sticker on it. Do you remember a Richard any? Brees game? It's what? Uh, is it a Richard Brees game? No, uh, it's um, it's Peter Prince, with a Z. Pr- Prince. Do you know? Oh gosh, the uh, the Thebes game. <clears throat> Thebes, or Jen Sets von Theben, I think, or was right, the original right, right. Was there only two hundred copies of First Essen? It was re- yes, it was really super rare, and I and I stretched my and I finally got it at the at a prize table at a convention. Nice, picked it. I won the poker tournament that year and and got an early prize pick at a convention and got I mean, to pick it. So Queen Queen Games yeah, Queen, picked it up and put out it, Thebes. But the, yeah. and superior in every way, like. Um, and I don't remember the des- design changes. I can't remember, but it was, it's a archaeological game where you're on time track, which is my favorite mechanicism, and where you take time to do stuff, right? And you move your pawn ahead, and then you don't get your turn until everybody catches up to you or goes past you. Um, and you're digging for artifacts, and you're reaching into a bag, and you're pulling out mostly sand. Like, it, there's a lot of luck in this game. It's It's definitely one of those, like frustration like it's a very euro game where you're picking actions and doing things but then you're stuck with a luck mechanic of drawing out of the bag um but i love it and um if you haven't played it you, i think it's still in print i believe it's still in print yeah they uh, came out with a bit. card game version of it uh yeah i never played that one it's it's kind of the same thing just in card game form which isn't as cool as so you're drawing stuff cards out of the bag. Yeah, yeah digging that bag is awesome yeah like, pulling stuff the artifacts i think the card game i remember reading it had some sort of printing issue I never mm. looked into it beyond that because I heard there was some misprint on it. So I was Don't like, remember. Meh. But the card, no, the, the board game is, you're right. It's a good mixture of um, kind of very cut I and dry mechanisms. But then, that, like, drawing from yeah. the bag, you feel like, hey, let's go digging and see what I'm, I might hit jackpot yeah. here. You might. That's cool. And, might, and there's set collecting and there's research and there's other kind like showing off your stuff at a museum or whatever. I love it. What do you think? What did you think when you, you know you went out of your way to get that very rare copy? So when it's reprinted, how do you feel? I mean, how did that make you feel? Was that... I don't remember my feelings about that because I guess I was happy because other people could play it then. Well, that's and good. I could get a like the art is like if you look at the two, the the product. Oh, you're he's like no. That's the wrong answer. All when somebody when you have a game that's really rare, you have yes. one of two hundred, 
and yeah. it gets reprinted, you're supposed to be upset that you got one of the really rare expensive ones because now everybody can play it. I know. <laughs> That's the elitism right there. <laughs> what is that about? You want to play this game, you find me or one of the other 199 people who have it. That's, That's it. Yeah. Of course, you're not going to play with them anyway. <laughs> There's a little bit. Yeah, the collector in me is a little bit disappointed, right? The the value of it is lower. Do you but, still have that old version? No, I no. I I I think I sold it in the first BGG auction for charity. So, charity sold auction. it in rage. <laughs> and of course, and here's the thing: people don't know that it was so rare, right? So I, I think I maybe got like twenty or thirty bucks for it. Oh, someone's sitting on like history right now. Uh, All righty, it was history. By the way, Adj, thank you very much for your super chat saying Mike Delicio prefers Olive Garden breadsticks to lead ro- red lobster buns and is wrong. All right. Well, I agree on Just that. cheddar biscuits? Yeah, That's Mike ch- Mike thinks that the Olive Garden breadsticks are better and I'm not I'm really confused no. as to how you can think that. But I think those cheddar biscuits got crack in them. There's something Yeah, man. Are you them. kidding? Those things are insanely good. I don't Mike <laughs> must Mike and the CEO of Olive Garden are the only two, I think. They must be. <laughs> well, back in the day, remember we stock. used to go? Well, we, me and, me, Z and Sam would drive to a convention or something, and we stopped at Red Lobster for all you can eat shrimp. And I'm like, don't eat the bread. We got to get, we got to get, get more shrimp. Got to get more shrimp. <laughs> but it's so good to have bread. All right. My number 10 is a, I, I rank these, I don't know how I rank them. My favorite's obviously number one. But anyway, number 10 is, Robinson Crusoe, and that's because in this game you are exploring the land, which is not really that interesting, like, ooh, a tile with this on it, but it's more the cards you find. I feel like there's a sense of exploration as in you found uh, a, a cub. Do you, What do you do with that cub? And if, you, if you're not careful, the mom will come attack you later on. And I think I like the exploration here because it has long-range consequences. Mm-hmm. You know, you find some water sitting in a pot. Ah, just yeah. drink it, see what happens. Well, later that night, your body tells you mistake was made. Um, and I enjoyed that concept. In fact, that's my favorite part of Robinson Crusoe. 100%. So, I don't even know other games that have utilized that. I, I, feel I, like I really thought people kind. would steal that. It seems it's like a totally, good mechanism. It's totally borrowable, yeah. The future consequences of that thing, you know, it's really fun. Yeah, it's interesting to me. Like, you think that there could be, you draw a card, and if... And if you pick you pick an option, and then if you want that option, it goes in this deck. If not, it goes in this deck, or something like that. I don't know. It just feels like it could be done. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a good choice. Thank you. Number nine for me is one of those very rare games. Very rare. In There's only 50 it, copies. 50 copies. No, no, 20 no. Copies. I, mean the, <laughs> I mean the game style, not the game. The copy, I think you can find it. But um, no, the game concept is a game that works, I think, equally well as a cooperative game and as a competitive game. And that's that's I really do think that's very, very rare. Where both of those things work and they were not like a stretch goal right this was this was before that um this is a game called gem rush and i'm talking specifically about second edition here just because it's prettier but they're the same game gem rush gem rush second edition you are exploring a cavern and you are a dwarf i guess exploring the cavern you have a hand of gems so it's a lot of hand management and you spend those gems to explore into a new space when you pay the cost along the side of the car, and square square cars that make up this uh, mine, then you draw a new one and play it next to it. That's the place you just dug into. And that new space will have actions you can take there, and you can explore other places from there. You get victory points as you're digging these places out. Uh, and I really just like the flow of the game. I love a game, any game, especially exploration games, but any game where you your choices and the sort of layout on the table and everything that you are interacting with just steadily grows and grows and becomes grandiose. And eventually you look down and you go, look at all this stuff we found. This is so cool. I'm going to travel over. I'm going to jump in this mine card. We come over here and take this action because all the mine cards connect. And so, so I love that, the sprawling sort of nature of it. It's not a big game by any means. It just feels very exploratory, and I like that about it. 
So Gem Rush, second edition, my number nine pick. Add this to the catch up palooza. I need to try this one. I need I haven't played it. I never even heard of it. Interest that's you, you stumped me, Z. That's pretty interesting. And, and that's it's a, it's a victory uh, point victory, games. victory yeah. point games put which, this out. Which uh, may not be around. May, that game may not be around anymore to be I'm not sure if it's uh like still know, in print. Oh man, I actually I had never seen I used to own Gem Rush the first one. And I had seen pictures of Gem Rush, the second edition, and never seen one in the wild. And I finally did see huh. one at the UKGE at some at a booth that would happen to be selling a variety of things. And I jumped on, and I'm really glad I did. Uh, well, I'll put it on my my look for list. Does it have and, those little cutouts like the laser? Because everything from Victory Point was like laser. No, cutout. not the second edition. Right. Okay. So the first edition, yeah, the second edition is like they're in their premium line. So it's. Okay. Nice quality cards, More good box, all that stuff. stuff yeah. yeah, yeah. So, uh, my number nine, I think only me and Tom like. It's called Lost Valley. It's from, oh. gosh, I think Panasaurus <laughs> reprinted it. Oh, yeah. is there a history there? No, no it's, it's, you're, it's you're old right. school, man. I'm the only one who ever talks about this game. It's me and Tom. Because <laughs> I looked at the reviews, and I remember back in the day when this game came out, it got tanked hard by yeah. the reviewers of the day, let's say. Uh, and almost killed it, I think. Um, I think it's the only game with Rombi or Rhombuses. Well, no, they did that in a few other games. Remember they made that Bonobo Beach? Yes, that's right. That was their thing. That was their shtick. Everything was with Rombi. So you explore the terrain. It's set in the Yukon territory, right? You're mining for gold, and you're each against each other. And there's sort of like you can go steal stuff from other people's mine. Like if I blow up a mine, you, I, Tom can come steal my gold, and I get pissed off and like – be angry but it had a very cool like simulation thing right you would hunt to get the food you would try to get the gold you would pan the river for gold you would um buy stuff sell stuff there was a store it's like very much a simulation of like mining for gold in the yukon and then the exploration was really cool because it would you would fill out your grid with rombi and <clears throat> also there was a river and when the river hit the end the ice flow would start flowing backwards towards the start and when that got to the end that was the game thought I, underrated i think and i don't know i i know there was some complaints about it and i never felt it this the complaints that people uh had so this Lost was definitely this feels like it's due for uh a return maybe, tour on kickstarter or something right i would buy it again yeah, yeah I mean, well, maybe, I, maybe pandasars will do it i wonder what happened yeah. to the gosslers do they still make games i don't know because I haven't heard anything from them in ages. Because th back then I was so excited. I saw their Bonobo Beach. It just felt like these indies, you know, they were they would be on Kickstarter now. Yeah. You yeah. know, I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I haven't heard anything in a while. So I think they're but it, was but Chrono, it did get Chrono reprinted. I don't know if it's still in print, but I suspect you could find a copy if you wanted one. Probably. Oh, yeah. I don't think it's in print, but yeah, you can probably get one. Yeah. Cool. Oh, my number nine is the least amount of exploring, I think. I mean, you're doing a ton of exploring in this game, but you're doing it really fast because the game is only 10 minutes long, and that is Escape. But I feel like this is an exploration game because you're flipping over tiles and finding more of this temple, and you're looking for very specific things. And especially if you add in one of the... Queen Queen usually puts out one or two expansions per month two, one for or each 200. of their games. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's yeah. so many. So you can buy, like, the big box Escape. And you will always be finding new things to the point where you may have to stop the timer and go, what does that tile do? Yeah. <laughs> Which kind of defeats the point. But I like this game. I feel like each time you're, you run down a path, oh, that's the wrong way to go. We need to turn around and go back this way. So I know this one's maybe the loosest one on this list, but that's I like totally enough to put it on. That's totally exploration. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, it's, yeah that's I a good one. I for, for, kind of forgot about Escape. Yeah, escape and Escape is, Zombies, uh... right? That one too. We're being too I, nice, guys. This is, no, awesome. that's a good one, is this Tom, supposed to be a critical show. I like. Oh, we gotta I be like, too nice with each other. Oh, I see what you're saying. Let me. I'll I amp it up. Uh, I'll amp it up. You'll this amp is, up the. Amp yeah, up but this the is hate. my weakest one. The rest of mine are rock solid. Only Can't you even. think so, baby. Yeah, I'm gonna wreck the rest of them. Uh, I think anyway. this is good because it's outside the norm, Tom. I mean, yeah, it's a tile flipping. I'm gonna have some tile flipping and all that, but not on the clock. You know what I mean? So that's cool. Well, there you go. My number nine, Escape.
All right, my number eight is I wanted to put out some kind of uh, escape room type game on the list. I think those those you know concepts, yeah. those kinds of games are very much about discovering and exploration and opening a thing or finding a new card or what have you. I decided to go with Unlock. I think Unlock has gone to a lot of different settings in their in their line of games, and I like that the exploration and it comes from a few different sort of things you know but there's a lot of visual exploration that idea of grabbing a card understanding it exploring it then solving something with something else uh, combining cards to fix something else or to to fit a puzzle so <clears throat> yeah unlock for me is a is a good series one that i very much recommend if you are someone who enjoys that sense of discovery in uh, in gaming in general and you want to solve some puzzles of course Number eight, unlock. Yeah, I didn't put these on my list, but I debated about it for a while. That's that's a solid choice as much as I want to say no. Oh, I see what's up. There Save you go. It. Oh, I like unlock. I think unlocks are awesome. And such uh I like the reusability of it too, because the other stuff, the other what is it? Um Exit. I'm drawing a blank. <clears throat> exit. Yeah, the exits are destructible, which I can't give that game away after I played it, which is kind of unfortunate. Yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. All right. Well, my number, what are we on? Eight? Yes, sir. Yeah. Eight, sorry. Uh, is uh, one that would make Eric Summer happy. It's called Merchant of Venus. You are going old school is today. Is that an escape? Is that wow. an exploration game? It kind of, it, it kind <laughs> of is, right? Like, it, not everything is always in the same place. So you're sort of exploring the universe uh setting up trading deals it's more of a pick up and deliver game if i'm being really honest but the exploration of finding all this stuff is fun for me um and then you're running your spaceship around and you're picking up stuff and selling it to other stuff and one of the really coolest uh, market mechanics i've ever seen where when you buy something goes back in the or sell something goes back in the cup and then creates sort of a limited like marketplace and value of things um yeah it is old what is that 1988 was the and i've only played the original so i've not played the reprint so I don't know what changed. I'm going old school. Yeah, the well, they put two games in a box. I don't know what the new game was like, but one side was the original. You version. could play the original version on yes. the new print. Yeah. Right. Well, this is the only pick so that far for that, you, I Eric. A, that I think is a terrible choice. All day. Oh, my God. <laughs> You've never even played the game. What do you know about it? I played well, Merchants of Venus. Oh. Did you play it with, with Eric? Yeah. Oh. It's a terrible <laughs> game. But besides that. I, I hate the game. That's not the point. You're allowed to like the game, and I'm allowed to dislike it. That's okay. I just don't think it really feels like an exploration game. It's pick up and deliver, it's, sure. It's, and then there's like pushing a tra the, it's pushing the traverse. I, I will admit. You know, it's but like your account on EGG seems to have disappeared. Um, oh, oh yeah. what, snap. what was your username again? <laughs> oh, no. It's Mike Delicio. Anyway. Um, <laughs> All right. Uh, first of all, I want to say a quick thank you here to Sebastian for your super chat. But interesting, Aldi, that you mentioned the Merchants of Venus because my number eight is what I consider to be the replacement game for that, oh, and okay. that would be Zaya. Oh yeah, yeah. I have not played it. So, and here's the Zaya thing: I'm going to get my, my gamer Zaya, education. You don't know what you're flying into. Yeah. Well, you can look. You can look and explore. No, no, but I mean, but but it's it changes. You like. You peek at a, ple at a place in space and something different will be there. And Merchant of Venus is just a board, right? I mean, it's always the same, I think. I'm, I'm the, hesitant. I've only played it once different. with Eric Summer. Um, and maybe that's the, the common point there. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I feel bad for You're Eric. trying to find specific aliens to sell and buy to. Like, it's, that's the exploration part of it. That's true. Right. You are hunting down different things. You're hunting down things. aliens. Yeah, that's the what I was talking about. But anyway, well, Zaya... And well, I'm yeah, going to for, sure. for people because I did not uh, did not play the expansion for Zaya yet. I, the, Roy's on me about that all the time, and I heard that makes the exploring like even more. Yeah. Uh, and but that's why it's lower on my list because I think exploring's just a part of the game. It's a cool part. It's a good part, and I like finding stuff. And I always look before I jump into Suns, but a lot of fun for me. Number eight, mm -hmm. Zaya. Shut up, Tom. All right, my number seven is Mansions of Madness, second edition. 
never did play the first one, but whatever. Uh, I, I like the, again, sense of opening a room and discovering what's in there, having the different scenarios because of the app play out a little bit differently. You know, you, you again, open up a new space and the app this time through a session through the same scenario, there is a different room in there with a different layout, maybe a different, you know, cultist or something or a beastie. And that sense of progression is, I, I like the exploration in this one because the scale in most scenarios is quite small. And I think that's not often done. Exploration is often grand. You're discovering a new planet or you're discovering a new town. You know what I mean? It's usually now you're discovering a new room in a house that you're unfamiliar with or like a hotel. So I like that about it. I like that it makes it really personal. It brings down the scope. It puts everything very close to you. So when you think of it in terms of real space, you open a door, and if you discover something, it's right there in your face. Like, it's three feet away. Uh, and I I think that lends to the sense of dread walking around. I really enjoy that about it. Mansions of Madness, second edition, my number seven pick. It's nice. Yeah, it's a good one. Um, and the app adds randomness to scenarios too. Yeah, 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 is, right. I was, I was blown away the first time I saw that in that app. It was like, wow, that's really cool because yeah, it's neat because it's controlled randomness. Yeah, like, it, it's gonna be random, you... but the the layout kind of is the same ish. Yeah. Did you right. play the murder mystery one? I have not. Isn't that the really oh. really long one though? Is it? I don't remember. Um, it's, there is a really long a, one I played solo. I think that's the it, one. But you're trying to figure out who the killer is. The lights go out and everybody disappears, and you have to figure out who the killer is. And it's like different every time. Like you, you can't. It's not always the same character. It's like I a clue. one of the expansion ones. It's an expansion for sure. Okay. And then I have one of the like the train okay. and ship one. Is that the one set on like a train yeah. or a ship? I all? think it's. In, I think it's just like the murder of this dude. Like I can't okay. remember. The, I I wish I knew. I wish I was more. But that, that blew. As soon as I thought, oh wow, they're putting programmatic randomness into these with the plot. Yeah, that was cool, and I wonder I how much more played. they've done that. Yeah, I haven't played give that, that one a try if you can find it. If I, I can, I'll find it for you. I'll figure out what, what it was. Um, that almost made my list, by the way. It's very close. Cool. Uh, okay, my number seven is another game that was very hard to find back in the day, and I found a copy, and we played the heck out of it. Is Tales of the Arabian Nights? You guys know that one? Yeah, yes. Tom likes it. You're walking around. <laughs> in the... It's another Z favorite. Um, yeah, so you're walking around in the world of what would you call that? A thousand and one Arabian Nights. All the all the stories there, um, trying to accomplish your preset goals, where you as a player get to decide how much fame or fortune or glory. I can't remember the the terms, but um, it's victory points basically in in two different categories. Um, and you encounter a storybook where you explore the world and find stuff and weird stuff happens and you have almost no control over it. You do get a choice of a response that I almost, I would say like sometimes they make sense. And it's a tough system, right? Like to come up with all these responses for all these questions, for all these stories and have something really meaningful come out of it. Like you encounter a, a genie out of, you know, you rubbed a lamp and a genie came out. How do you want to react to it? Um, Scare, you want to, do you want to be scared? Do you want to be cur courageous? Do you want to boast? Do you want to, you know, all these different choices you get. Um, and then you're hoping for good outcomes. Um, and then you play, you play for a long time. It's a long game. Um, and sometimes I've called it many times before just finishing it. But I've it's usually, done that. it usually goes a little too long for its, for its own good. But um, I always have fun because the crazy stuff that happens to you. Right. I've never had so much fun as a turn being turned into a woman. I mean, that was awesome. <laughs> Cut that clip out of the show. Um, I think this is another one that no, we're going to use that in the future. Do... Oh, we're going to use that. Okay. I think this is another one that uh, definitely would be due for a Kickstarter, and, and some it probably good does. things could come and out of I that. Heard, I heard a rumor once that there was going to be a um, like a Lovecraftian version, like a cthulhu -y. One it was also supposed to be a King Arthur and his knights version of it. Yeah, bring them on, people. We yeah. want. Yeah, that would be neat. Add mechanisms this time, like actual, you know, choices. Oh wow, what do I, what do I? I thought about this one. I just couldn't think of the way it fit into exploration, because I guess it's the exploration of plot that create. For you know, the most part, it doesn't matter where you move on the map. 
it kind yeah it it didn't matter but there was places of power i don't know if you remember that but like sure and, those, those yeah, are cool they're hard to yeah. get to though yeah or you yeah it it gives you a sense of like oh wow this, the map may be not so interesting as more as the stories that was right yeah you know, that come out of it all righty welcome powell new member thank you for joining and i have the first crossover here and that oh, is wow. with scott and this is lost valley oh, oh. Yeah, a little higher. I was actually surprised. Yeah, it's interesting. I, man, there's again, it kind of bugs me that more people don't like this game because the downtime in this game is almost non existent. You do one or two small things move, fish, move, search for gold. But this building, this, you're exploring, but you're also trying to place the tiles in such a way that you can put out these little triangle pieces, which are amazing. There's like really cool things on them, but they're hard to put these rhombi out so that you form those. And I just, I don't know. Yeah, I it just, bends your brain a little bit. You're like, and you can play with it. You, you're, I think you're allowed to like fit it in and see how you want to do it, right? Like I can flip it this way. It'll do something different. If I flip it that way, it'll go, yeah. Sure. And also you're trying to put stuff together for you. And I I like the equipment you can buy. You buy a horse, you move three spaces. And that's doesn't seem like a big deal, but you have to debate. Maybe I want the, or the horse lets you move two spaces, or I want the canoe that lets me go across the river. Mm, you know, these are right. these are good choices, and it feels very thematic. And I would say it's due for a reprint, but the first reprint did not break the doors down. Yeah, maybe it's one of those games that only a mother could love, right? Like, I mean, like it's just. It doesn't, <laughs> yeah, could be. I just, always wonder. Yeah, it my, could be a little too I, weird. It, that could be it, but yeah, I mean, I think it's, I think it's about the timing of when it comes out, and I think right now is as good as Tom as it's ever been. For this sort of sandboxy adventure. Yeah. Because this game's like an early sandbox game. It really kind, is. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. But unlike the other games on our what? list, I don't think this one is for solo play. You're definitely trying no, you to beat to, your opponents. Yeah. You're trying to get the most gold. Um, and that, so maybe in a year, this would maybe be more ripe to come out. Who knows? So yeah. anyway, Lost Valley, my number seven. All right, my number six is one of my uh, very uh, new entries, or one of the newer entries, and this is a card-driven game. It's basically all cards. The exploration is happening from uh, cards that every player has. It's cooperative. It's called Paleo. It's right behind me, I think, actually. Um, and Paleo here, you set up the game with a different scenario every time you play. There's a, like 12 decks or something. You shuffle a couple of them in there, and then you and your... Your group of characters, sort of, you know, cave people, are flipping over cards, selecting what card you want to flip over from the top three, and flipping over one and, and exploring it. You might just find berries, and you, you know, on a bush, and you take those. You might discover a cave. You can fight in there, or you can avoid it, or you can take a big risk and maybe kill an animal and take its meat, but then you might get hurt. Things like that. There's no it's not like uh, Tales of the Arabian Nights in which you are given something and don't know what will happen after the choice. You do. The card is, there's no, you know, uh, witty write-up or anything. It's a Euro game. It tells you exactly what's going to happen right on the card. But I like the sense of, I guess uh, uh, the the effort that, that the players have to put into, you know, finding what works and you'll go through the deck a few times every time the deck runs out or your stack runs out then it's nighttime and in that phase it's very much like robinson crusoe in which you have to eat you have to make sure you're sleeping in a tent or something based on the scenario or you get hurt and i really like it i think it translates some of those ideas very very well to just decks of cards it's cool it's engaging i like it quite a bit paleo my number six this Paleo's is a fine awesome. game but it's, I, I don't it. think it fits this list. I don't feel like you're exploring at all. You're just flipping a card. I think thematically it very much fits. I think flipping but, over a card is not any different than flipping over a tile, except it's no, it doesn't have a, a spatial element. Because you don't know what the card front is, and the back gives you a hint as to what it might be. Yeah. I that's feel that's true. the exploration okay. part. I retract like, my... 
like you're on the mountain. You, if you're looking for a specific, you want you definitely want a cave because you got to do that cave painting, right? Are all the all, right. all the scenarios win with a cave painting? I can't remember. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. That's it. That's how you win. Yeah, and then um, you're like, oh well, there's only really caves in the mountains, so I'm exploring the mountains to find the cave. Right, but it might be like a tiger, you know? So yeah. There's one that has a normal back, but the front is something bad, and so sometimes you'll be like, well, I'm walking here, well, ah, you know. So I like that about it. I think it's it's exploratory. Yeah, I like, I, like no, the system. I, I retract what I said. You're so wrong, Tom. <laughs> yeah, so, so wrong. wrong. That already. Okay, never mind. I'm go, I'm I'm doubling down now. Number six. <laughs> uh, my number six is um, it's kind of one of my favorite games. I actually now that I think about it, um, it's Tobago. You're exploring an island. You're in a little jeep, and you're exploring an island, fi- trying to find hidden treasure. And it's got deduction in it. So as you f- you play cards to make rules that basically prove that the treasure is where you want it to be. Right. Which is, and each time you play a card, you're like removing, like you're like, well, the treasure has to be next to water. So everything without next to water is like eliminated from the game. And you're like, well, it has to be in the line of sight of one of these, um, what are they tiki heads or whatever the statues. Yeah. And it's you're you're exploring the island through the play and eliminating possibilities of where the treasure is and then you're finally going to like once it's down to like one space the treasure appears and then everybody races toward it with their jeeps and you want to be in the right space at the right time um and i kind of love it i mean i haven't played in a while but i remember enjoying it really a lot um because it's got deduction um and that might deduction might not be the right word induction i don't know um it's sort but, of like uh, you're whittling down the choices. It's sort of like yeah. group. It's group decision, so it's in, right? So it's in it's your sort of, favor. Yeah. Because yeah, you yeah, might yeah. play a card that like eliminates all the possibilities that are near my Jeep. And then it's like, oh, the Jeep is on the other side of the island. Now I got to try to like get over to that side and like fi- fiddle with it. Um, and then digging for treasure, again, it's an exploring for treasure type game. So you're not sure what you're going to get. Um, it's fun. It's a gorgeous game, too. Yeah. And there's an expansion which I have not played yet, but uh, oh yeah, we may we that's may right, have that. I keep soon. forget. Did we get that Z? No, that's the game. The funny thing is between the game and the expansion, that was that was quite a few years because this game is um, yeah the game's it's a while back. Um, yeah, I have yeah, the yeah. game. I just yeah, I, remind so, me later, Z. We got to hunt that expansion down. Am I allowed yeah. to do a plug on your show, Tom? Yeah, sure. So we're we're importing the expansion and the game. oh, well, so we'll have the game and the expansion. Relevant like and, that. Uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Not, not that was not the reason I put that on this list. By hey the way. Tom, I'll, I'll help you find it, okay? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Tell me where where I could get it. <laughs> I'll, I'll get you a copy. <laughs> oh, well, then you can plug all you want now. There um. All right. Um. Thank you, by the way, to Shazam and to Edge, who's still on mic, um, for your super chats. All right. <laughs> My number six. Now we're getting into big things. Thank is you. from Awakened Realms. And that's ether fields. In this one, you are exploring through dreams. And they're all horrific dreams. Whether they be filled with roaches or mannequins that come to life. Oh. Or getting lost in a maze with a guy chasing you down trying to kill you. Uh, so, Not yeah. Fun. Wow. Yeah, well, you know what? They're, they're not so, I mean, it's not so, there's, not, there's no blood or gore that I've noticed. It's, you know, more of a kind of that dread but it's about the game mechanisms. But I, I love going into a dream and just seeing what that dream's going to be like. Like, oh, what's this dream going to be like? You know, here I am. I'm in the pages of a book. Here I am. Everything's dark. That doesn't bode well. Right. I like the exploration facet of this a lot. So that's my number six, Ether Fields. Oh, I'm not spoiling anything, Chad. It's on my list. It's on my list. I'm waiting for uh, Game Group to come back to that. For that yeah. one. I'm saving it. Well, that's, I'm, 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 I'm excited that it's list, so huh? high because um, actually, I, know some... the, I, I really like this one solo. Yeah, I, I, I I've enjoyed it more solo because I don't have to wait. You know, I was about to say other players slow me go down. Ahead, go ahead, yeah, yeah. go ahead, go say it. You don't <laughs> have to deal with other people's inferior uh, <laughs> cerebral capacity. I get no, it. no, no, <clears throat> no. I don't know. It just worked really well solo. I would just play through quickly, looking at things. I don't know. I just had a good time with it. This is a game that would definitely move at a nicer clip, uh, just solo oh, wow. or one or, or two players, because you... it's sprawling. It's a sprawling does, game. Does each person control a character in the in the multiplayer? Yes. Like you're all in the same world. 
dream world? Yeah, it just makes the not... challenges the challenges are easier when you have only one person. Okay. And if you have multiple people, yes, you can go in different directions. I, I like it with both. I just have really enjoyed it solo. Okay. All right, number five for me is uh, a game I just absolutely love playing. It's a co-op game again, one of those tile flippy co-op games. And I, it's such an easy game to get into that, in fact, after I put it on this list a couple nights ago, I decided to pull it out and play it by myself. The game is called Subterra. Oh, I thought this would be your number one. It's right there. Um, is that an exploration game? It is because you are, the, the, the premise being... The players, however many of you are playing, you, you're you each representing a character a la, you know, Pandemic, and you fall into a cavern and you have to find the exit. In that cavern are all sorts of things that are going to mess you up. Sharp rocks that might cut you, and uh, there are uh, water pools that suddenly fill, so like geyserish places that might hurt you. There's rock falls, and there are these monsters in there that will chase you down. And so as you are exploring, you flipping over tiles and placing them in front of yourself, and the whole thing builds like a you know like a bunch of a bunch of different paths. Sometimes you hit a dead end, like Tom was saying. In fact, I hit a dead end the other night, and I was really deep into this one cavern, man. And there were <laughs> I hit a dead end and had to backtrack a lot. So I love that sort of cinematic feel to it. That idea of you know these people are struggling. Oh, this one gets hurt and falls down. So another one needs to rush to where they are and revive them, get them back up on their feet. So it's but 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 all of that cinematic nature and then exploration and enjoyment is contained within some really straightforward rules. This is a game that when when I play solo, you run four characters and it is so easy to do that. I mean, like really easy. You can just, boop, 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 you know, you take your actions and you go. So I really like that about it. Um Really excited about Subterra 2 coming out sometime this year. And uh, I think that's going to be a good one, too. But, yeah, Subterra is great stuff. I love it. Number five. It has been zero days since Z has added Subterra to a top <laughs> ten list. <laughs> was it on my wow. last list? It's on a lot of lists. <laughs> I really like it, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm going to have to check it out because for some reason I thought it was a social deduction game, like where you had a traitor amongst you or something. No. Is that not part of the game? No, oh, I totally it's not even in any of the expansions. No, no, okay. you're just that's, exploring. That's just me mis misremembering what it was. Cool. Yeah. I'll check that out. Yeah. Didn't they do a giant deluxe version too, like with a massive box? I think There's so. There's a big box. Yeah, there was a big yeah. box that contains basically the original core box, that box, and then expansion. Expansion. Okay. Cool. Yeah. And minis. There were minis in there too. So my number five is a game that I don't know if I would describe as fun. <laughs> but fair enough it's sort of fun to, i i enjoy the process of playing it for the feelings it gives me any <gasps> idea yes i do it's the uh, the first one from awakened realms yes another awakened realms game this it's war, war of mine mine yes this war of mine which i wow, didn't Tom. i thought it, yeah well, no that's the it only out. game i could think that meets that description that's yeah, not because fun, it's like but you still might play to get feelings you get feelings from it for sure if if you feel you know if you get into it and be like yeah i really got to protect these characters from basically dying i mean there's a this is a death this is a mature game there are some serious um adult themes in this game yeah um and it's all told through a paragraph book like it's a it's a paragraph book exploration game you go visit locations to try to basically survive you need food every night. You need materials to, like, excavate your house and, like, build up. Like, I mean, we were, like, super happy when we built a chair. Like, that was, like, the best feeling because someone could rest in the chair. <laughs> like, right, like, you can sit in the chair Instead now. of, like, sitting in the cold and, like, dying of, of hypothermia. Um, it, it, it has, like, some success feelings. It has defeat. I don't, I don't want to spoil anything, but, it, like, it has some grim outcomes, too. Um but I felt I it's, it's important it's to put on the game. anything to say you're going to die. I, people will, I almost feel like people will die in that game, no, ma yeah, no matter what I you do. I don't think you can stop that. Yeah, I don't, it's, it, if the difficulty is pretty high, um, and sometimes you just get random events that'll just kill a kill character. 
Yeah. Yeah, and sometimes so. your characters also get depressed. Yeah, the depression yeah. is another big part of it. Um, and and your actions matter. Like you might come across a family that's hiding in a building, and you, you take their food, and it'll say, "Mark down this number." When you take their food, and then at the end of the game, it'll be like, "Did you do number forty-nine?" And you're like, "Yep." Well, here's your story, and this you're is a monster, happens. right? right yes, yeah, right. so you're a monster. But yeah, it's a really tough. It's, it's a if tough you get game, into themes, is, be warned going into this because it it's tough on a lot of spots. Right. Right. But I do I do enjoy the gameplay as well. Like to figure out how to survive basically. Um and explore the this weird world that's in war, gripped in war. A civil war I think is what it is and you're in the middle of it. Yeah, it's uh yeah, it's I think it's one of those wars. I don't remember which war. I don't I don't yeah. think it's a specific war, but it's it's it, based on the author growing up in a war-ridden country. Right. Wow. Yeah. I never thought country. my number five would be uplifting compared to the previous entry, but um, it's also an Awakened Realms game because they're this is their bread they're, and butter. This is their, yeah. And that's Tainted Grail, um, which is a dark version of the Arthurian legends. And I debate it on if I want to put this above Etherfields, but I think I like Tainted Grail slightly better exploration-wise because you might run across something that's familiar. I, I always find that cool. Like, if you have... Like, I don't know how to explain it. Like, if I'm in a movie, and it's like a post-apocalyptic movie, and they come across the White House, and it's covered with vines and something, I'm like, oh, that's cool. Like, I know yes. what that is, but it's also the future. Well, that's how this is. You might come across a character from King Arthur and his knights in a different way, and you're like, oh, that's that character. Well, that's really cool. Also, the game is called Tainted Grail, which didn't occur to me until, like, three hours in um, that, that was referring to the Holy Grail. So that's kind of neat, too. And I don't know, the story, the, the writing in Etherfields is fine, but the writing in Tainted Grail is spot on. And I saw someone here in the chat said that there's audio reading of it. So I might have to go check oh, that really? out. That sounds, oh, wow. that sounds really cool. Like so, yeah, I, this is one I should play, man. I, um, me too. Me too. It sounds I don't know. Again, I'm I'm sort of I, I can never tell if I'm gonna like a game that's one of these big epic games and they are a commitment, so that's why I'm a little more hesitant. But this one sounds good. And I thought Etherfields was all right, Dom. I enjoyed playing with you guys, but if you're saying this has better exploration and better writing, uh I'm gonna have to check it out. Yeah, Is I think solo you might like level? It. can you solo it? Oh yeah, for sure. I played this one solo too. This one also is a nice a nice introductory thing. The only thing I could see, Z, is that the combat is somewhat long and convoluted. But then, of course, you could just be like, I'm done and go on. You know, you don't have to. You, I you think I might. I dipped my toe. To I dipped my toe into the game and I was like, I don't like the core loop of the, the game. And I was like, oh, do we really want to play this? And we kind of like came to a, a conclusion of like, let's wait and come put it, yeah. you know, some, maybe a, some other day. Because that core loop is a little tedious. Am I wrong? Or I know it gets easier as the game goes on. Sure, but, but it's Awaken Realms does this. I mean, Etherfields has the same thing. There's these little dreams that you go through, and I'm like, ah, I could have cut that part out. And that's yeah. how I feel with Tainic Grail. There's these combats. Cut, it's cut really cut cool the first out. couple times, and after that, I'm like, eh, I just want to see what's happening in the story. Yeah, I want to okay. explore the story. Yeah. Okay. I'll go back to it. That's true. Someone mentioned this is my third solo game now. Okay. Well, anyhow. Tain a grail. Well, it's a solo five. game year, everybody. All right. Near and far is my number four. Uh, finally, want to jump in here with uh, one of these book games, guys. I feel left out. So this one has sort of two concepts, two very dissimilar games clashing and but really making a great stew together. You got the Euro game, you know, sort of action selection where on your turn you have to move your character to a new place in town and take the action there, drawing new cards, gathering gold and gems and all that stuff. But then also the other half of the game, then you leave town and go exploring on the map. So you'll traverse, you'll fight baddies sometimes, and that's really straightforward. Or you'll go into a place and have a little story read to you. I like the 
idea of, you know, every time you play on a new map, discovering what's out there. But it's also got all the other sort of mechanical breaks from it so that you can build up and, and enjoy that part of it. And it's actually one of the ones I would definitely recommend to folks that aren't sure if they want to jump into a an, a, an exploration game. If you're thinking, I don't know if I like the, you know, I'm not, I'm not an exploration person. I don't really like that theme very much or, or kind of game. Try this, because I think the way it's couched within all the other parts of the game will allow you to sort of dip your toe into it, enjoy a little bit of reading and you know, making a choice as to this weird character you encountered out in a hut in the desert and how you interacted with them. And then you jump back to town and take your normal, you know, worker selection uh, uh, actions. So near and far for me definitely gives me a nice feeling of walking these dusty plains and, and, and you know, finding stuff and interacting with it. My number four. Good, good choice. I've played it. I, I wish it wasn't co- competitive, but that might be a prelude to my future choices. I don't know. <laughs> right, right. Okay, okay. I get you. But I, because I, my, and this is not a problem, but I just disliked random choosing location and someone getting so much reward, whereas I would go choose a location to get a rock. You know, I'll get, I'll get nothing. You know, like that little bit of yeah. like, I couldn't figure out how, uh, uh, why that was the case in those games, right? Because it's like, by no tr- by no fault of my own, I stumbled into nothing and I wasted a turn. But that's super I mean, you will. They stuff. will have a harder test probably to get something better, to get though, good you stuff. know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then also, I mean, if you found a place that was easy, yeah. that means you're saving up your hearts probably. And that means yeah. you can put out more tents out in the wild, and that's points, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I need to give it a try, because I know they also put a co I think they put a co-op, Orion put a co-op version out as an expansion, if I'm not mistaken. He's probably designed 65 variants. I don't know but, that yeah. he sleeps. But I really like the world. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All righty, so... My, wait, wait, it's Aldi. That was, Calm down, Tom. Oh, that was not I, yours. I spoke sorry. too much. Uh, yeah. yeah. That was, <laughs> I thought that was your Sorry. Back My to... number four has the word explore in it. So it has to be an exploration game. Oh, snap. It's called Explore It. <laughs> and I, and okay. I, chose, I chose the um, the first one because there's three of these Explore It's. Hex. Explore It. Um, I chose the... Sorry, I'm loading. Valley of the Dead King is the only one I've played so far. Okay. Um, you. It, this is the um, board game version of a rogue like game like a video game you build this random character you combine two it, the character creation is super fun you get to pick a class you get to pick a um uh is it a race race, race in a class yeah. and yeah. then you can combine anything with anything you can be like an undead cleric like, but they have all what? kinds of really weird classes too yeah and it's all it's not just very it's yeah there's all kinds of cool stuff in there i barely scratched the surface of the choices um fun stuff that gives you your powers that gives you your starting abilities um and then you go from there. You just start exploring the, the world, coming across like monsters, weird puzzles to solve, um, uh, random events that can mess you up. Or it, there's some pick them and deliver. There's other. There's all kinds of weird. There's a living card game version of it where they basically you scan a QR code and it gives you an adventure. They they modify that over time. Huh. Um, wow. That's an expansion, by the way. A little a box. Um, a small box of cards. But uh, I really loved it <laughs> like it gives you that feeling of like i'm just slapping together a couple fantasy things and it's super fantasy um it has everything right and it, it'll and it's always random so you don't know what you're going to come across so you just have to adapt to it um combat's pretty straightforward i like the, the combat system there's a lot of bosses in the game some of them you might not even come across um and you're obviously in this one you're trying to kill or defeat the dead king before he he marches across the landscape and he's walking around um, and he gets, and you might think, oh, well, he destroys a city and then he goes faster. He like starts speeding up. So you're thinking, oh, I got tons of time left. And eventually he's moving like five spaces a turn and he's getting across the board in like two or three turns. And you're like, what's going on? All the cities are going. And so you're, you're, that's a cool timer mechanism that's in the game. Um, really love it, uh, for fantasy battles, exploration, who knows what's going to happen type game. Huh. 
Not yeah. played it? No, I never played it. I'm looking okay. at pictures as you're talking about that- it. It definitely does look, uh, it has kind of like an old school feel, right? Or look, anyway. And that's probably my biggest complaint about the game, is there's not enough art. The, well, the also, they have, they have yeah, yeah. art for characters, but you have to put them face down to but play the them. Art's on the back of your thing, and you, oh. you're like, oh, I want to... It's theater of the mind, for sure, in this game. You, you're like, you come across, like, some trolls, and you're like, well, there's no picture, and there's no mini... Sure. It's just sure. a card that says trolls, and it'll tell you what they do with their attack. It's very like minimalistic art. I okay. wish there was like more art in the game, and but it's it's obviously hot. It's number four on my list, so I mean I'm not gonna not gonna ding it too much for that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I just got the newest one of this. They just delivered the Kickstarter a month or so ago, and it looks like it's just another skin of the same game. Different characters, different species. They different keep adding bad. more. As I understand it, they add more game mechanism to ah. change it up. Well, that first book is a bit tough to get through, it though. It's, That's for it's sure. A, and I got it taught to me, so I'm. Ah. I was nice, nice. I didn't. And and the person who taught it ran it. Like all there's a calls, lot of stuff. Calls Rodney. Rodney flies. Rodney in. could come over, teach me this game. <laughs> I wish. I wish I could do that. Yeah. All right. My number four is a crossover with Z Garcia, and that is Mansions of Madness, second edition. Again, this every time I play this, I'm like, what's around that next corner? What's through that door? What am I going to find? And yeah. I think it does a really good job. The, this is one time where the music and sound effects really help. I can't right. imagine playing this without the app because it's so much better with that ambiance there. That adds to that whole... I'm going to find something. What is it? And so I did, just enjoy it. Did you ever play the first edition? I did. Did you, did, did you ever have a... De- and you have to have a dungeon master in, in, the, in the first edition. Like someone controlling the game part. I, I usually I, play I, the dungeon master. Yeah. And uh, if the dungeon master messes up setup oh, at all... It's horrific. It, it trash. You could be playing for two hours, and if you have a card in the wrong spot, you screwed up the game. You can't undo it. You can't fix it. I, I'm assuming that has happened to you. Well, it doesn't matter if it's happened to me or not. Um, but no, but I, before a game would start, I'd sit there and go, okay, this has got to go in this right spot. And it's just so much bookkeeping that I, you know, you went through it because the game was good. But as soon as the second edition said, the app will handle all that, I was like, done, mm. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. For so, sure. Man, no, I, I, I played a game where one card was out of place. Two hours in, you flip it over, you're like, What's wrong? What something's wrong, it, and the dungeon master doesn't know it, right? Because you do put cards randomly face down, and you, as a dungeon master, don't even know where something's supposed to be, and if it's not in the right spot in the right time, it completely wrecks it. But anyway, oh. it, it was still fun, but it, it had to work perfectly. But the second edition fixed it all up. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I imagine my number three is going to be higher on Tom's list. Uh, I doubt this dropped off. I don't think it did. And that's uh, the seventh continent. And the seventh continent. <sighs> yeah, yeah, shut up <laughs> with that fake. Um, here's the thing about the seventh continent. I actually don't like it as much as I like some of these other games like Near and Far and Subterra. I like better than the seventh continent. But. When you're talking about exploration, I bumped it up a couple of spaces on this list, okay? Because the seventh continent is, in many regards, exploration, the board game, in a box. I mean, there is so much here to discover. And it's it's sort of two levels of exploration also, because you've got just geography exploration in which you, I'm walking this way hey, look, I found an area. I found a space I hadn't seen, and I'm going to keep walking. You hit the coast. Okay, I'll turn around. I hit the edge, and I'll do this, and I'll do that. But then below that level, you're exploring within those spaces, the the, the world. Like, oh, there's, a, there's a, a little creature over here. What is that? I'm going to explore it. And then you'll draw again cards and figure out what it's doing. What are you going to do with it? How do you contend with that? So, I mean, there's just so much discover, so much exploration that this is the, I mean, 
It would be hard for any of us to not say this is the game that came to mind probably, you know, pretty close to right away when we thought exploration games. Even if you discount it, and even if you don't like it. Because it just, it's, you know, eponymous, I'm going to say it, with exploration. Number three, The Seventh Continent. It's a, it's a pretty good pick. What's up with that? It's all right. Pretty good pick, It's all right. Man. Yeah, whatever. It's cold as ice, right. fellas. I know. It's also uh, my number two and my number one, so you guys yeah. better get ready. Right. You got you got the expansions on. All right. Um, my number three is uh, Tom's pick uh, as well. Uh, Robinson Crusoe, the cursed the cursed island. Um, okay. That and that mechanism of the cards coming back and figuring out what to do and you know we didn't mention the totems that you find too, right? Like you're you're searching the island for specific totems depending on the scenario you're playing. Um, Right. I've not played any of the expansions, so I'm very curious to try some to see how. Because I know the the basic, like I played all the basic, all the, I should say the scenarios that come in the basic box, but I've not gone beyond that. And I know there's a ton of content out there for this game. Yeah. yeah. Um, which I think expands on the mechani- me- mechanics in the game to make it more exciting and more stuff happening. So, yep. Number three, Robinson Crusoe. Yeah, that's a good one. I didn't put it on my list. I think because of, like you said, the mechanics are a little. Yeah. They, I they're call so it... easy to they're so easy to forget for me. I just oh, every yeah, time yeah. I want to play it, I have to yeah, it's, relearn it's... the game almost. And I remember it was a bear to learn it the first time. I mean, we yeah. read from the rule book, and I, it was funny because I was playing it at a convention, and one of the guys who was just wandering by sat down and goes, "Can I watch you guys play?" And he's, "I'm sure, watch." So we played, and he's like, "That's wrong. You didn't do that right, and you didn't do that right, and you didn't do that right." And I'm like. Have I ever played this game correctly <laughs> until I met him? <laughs> like, wow. It's like, like a treat. It was um, awesome. Yeah. And then you found out it was Ignacy Trevichek. Yep. And that guy's name <laughs> was... That like Ignacy with a no, very thick accent. That. He would do that. <laughs> All right. My number three is another new game, and that is a pirate exploration game, Forgotten Waters. I, again, this is one, now this one I played with other people. I, I've not soloed this one, but I played with other people. But I love the idea, going through a book, finding different spots. It's a cool game of action placement, but the discovery of both the main storyline, random events that happen, the plaid hat just knocked this one out of the park. And the voice acting is top notch. Yeah. Again, that really adds to this game. It. It's fun. It's it's uh, piratish, but it's also fantastical to some degrees. I like that. There's a bit of you know supernatural type stuff around there. I'm always a big fan of that something in the background, like oh we're doing all this, but there's a Sasquatch, you know something like that. I like that concept, and this does a lot of that. That's cool. Yeah. So is there a Sasquatch in this? Because if so, I have to play it. I don't no, know. there's no. I don't think there's a Sasquatch. I've not run into one. Oh man. I'm out. False advertising. This. Well, this no, it's garbage. It's, I get yelled at if I even remotely come close to spoiling oh, something spoiling. from people who are never going to play the game. Like, Don't I, tell yeah. me how to enjoy this hobby. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, it's on my I, list. It's I'm waiting for COVID to be over to play it. Well, there's people. no, there's, there's no Sasquatch that I know of. So number three for me, Forgotten Waters. All right, my number two game is one of my absolute favorites. And I, yes, I know I put it on a lot of lists, Tom, but I love it. Why do not uh, more people talk about this? I don't know. Claustrophobia 1643 is a two player dudes on a map kind of game. You know, it's a, it's a skirmish type game with one side playing. You know, demonic hordes and demons and troglodytes and what have you. And then the other side playing slightly better humans. <laughs> and they are going to be, you know, the in, in many of the scenarios, some of some of the scenarios that come in the book aren't exploration. Not really, because you begin with an open map. You set it up with these tiles. But many of them, and really some of my favorites, are exploration. Where you are trying to, again, in many ways, kind of like a... And all growed up Subterra find the exit and get out. In Subterra, you find these little 
you know, terror uh, characters, which if they came toe to toe with these troglodytes and demons would be like their pets, you know, because this game is much scarier, much more intense. And there's a whole lot of fighting in it, but also exploring and, and flipping over caverns, finding one that has tentacles that attack you and one that uh, suddenly becomes a dead end. And you have to backtrack. So I really like that about it. I, I love exploring in this game that march forward, your health slowly falling. Or as the other side, because the two sides are very different, of course, as the demon player, the power you have from this endless horde of troglodytes and being em able to summon a hellhound and a, your, your main demon, stuff like that. So I really like this one. Claustrophobia 1643, number two pick for me. I need to play this. I if think you the, like the one that was holding crawly me back kind was of games, two I mean, player, if you enjoy yeah. if you enjoy dungeon crawling games, and you want to play one of two players, there's only two, but one that is a little sort of euro of center, you know what I mean? Yeah. Then this is a great, great pick for that. Okay. You get to turn over a tile and find out more demons, and then turn over to the next town. It's like more demons. It's very exciting. Yeah. There's not even demons on the tiles, Tom. There's other stuff. They come in from any open exit. You don't know what you're talking about, okay? Go back to phase 10. <laughs> I, I just, I very rarely find myself ever in the two-player two dungeon crawl situation. <laughs> yeah, it's good stuff, it's, man. That's a, I'll have to put, I'll push for it with someone. Does it have a, a digital version, do you know? Or is it all tabletop? I think there's a digital version. Okay. Okay. Feels like there could be though. Huh. That would be great, but I don't think so. Mm. Okay, number two, right? Yep. yep. Uh, it's the seventh continent, everybody. Number two, Woo! crossover, crossover. Um, what can I say that Z didn't say perfectly? Um, oh my. What kind of game would you ever come where? You, I, I'm not spoil. I shouldn't spoil anything. But there was something say so it. fantastic. Say it, that Sasquatch. I came across this dog that only spoke German, and someone at the group could speak German, and we got to get the dog card. Did you guys come across the German-speaking dog? No, but that's hilarious. Isn't that awesome? What? That's no. sort of awesome. It's all the card is 100% German. So if you don't know German, you can't. You're like whatever. Oh no, but that's where Google Translate German. comes in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Google Translate. Are you sure it was a game decision and not a translation problem? No, no, it 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 tells you if you speak okay. German, you can take. Well, do you remember the, I don't know if you remember in the very, like, I think it's in the first island, you find a dead seagull, and it says, are you vegetarian? God. Oh, I do remember, do remember that, yes. Do you remember that? Like, it's, it's outside, it's like breaks the fourth wall. Interesting. That, like, whoever has that encounter says, it says, do you, are you a vegetarian? Read this paragraph, not, if not, read this paragraph. So, huh. it has that, as, and there's more of that, too, I've peaked, but, um. I wish I could play it more. I just can't play it solo. For some, I can't manage it. It's a little too much card filing stuff to f have yeah. fun for me. That's why I like the multiplayer aspect of it, where someone can do cards for a while and someone can manage all the other stuff. And it's just it, it's it's awesome. I mean, I put twenty hours into it the day I got it. We did two days straight of ten hours each. Wow. The first, yeah, that was and that was intense. And then I played it again for another ten with a different group. Uh, which we didn't finish, and then I played again with the expansion. Uh, unfortunately, it crushed our will to play it. Uh, not mine. I have an unburning desire to play the game. Other people in the group. We made like we played four or five hours and made no forward progress, which is it's a bit frustrating. Wow. Yeah, um, yeah. But that's what the game gives you. I mean, it 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 throws that weird world at you, and you have to explore it. At least I do. I mean, I and I, you didn't mention the hidden number part, Z, did you? Or did you? No, right, right. Hidden numbers. That too, yeah. Like there's little numbers written, and so we're out with. We each bought a magnifying glass, by the way, <laughs> <laughs> so we can all have our own and look at all the stuff and try to find hidden numbers and stuff. It's it's great, great game. I'm glad it exists. I'm excited for the one, new one coming out. The new version of it, I guess, is is the Seven, seven Citadel. Oh, seven Citadel. Citadel. Yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. That's not coming out until, like, next year, though, isn't it? Oh, I don't... I always think everything's about to come out. I don't know. I'm not really sure. <laughs> With me, I'm, it's a it's a pledge and let go. It comes out when it shows up in the so, mail. Every day is like Christmas here. You got a new package. 
I, I really struggled between number two and number one. It was really close, but I finally decided my number two would be the very, very, very brand new Sleeping Gods from Ryan Lockett. I mean, Whoa. this game this game is 100% exploration. There's other stuff going on, but uh, he filled a whole book full of stories, him and his wife, and a, I keep, I really should learn the name of the third writer, but they did a really good job at writing these stories. I feel like they're interesting. I got caught up into it. You know, I, I was thinking, Scott earlier mentioned the universe, or Z mentioned the universe of near and far, and you like that universe. I, I think I, I like that that particular land a little bit better than the um, Sleeping Gods world. But I got into the Sleeping Gods world. I really enjoyed, you know, every part of it. It was really fun and interesting. So right. my number two, Sleeping Gods. All right, number one. You know, Scott, you were talking about um, the getting, you know, getting a seventh continent and then playing like a bunch of hours that day, a bunch of hours the next day. That's my number one for me, and it's a crossover with Tom, and it is Sleeping Gods. There you go. On the first day, played two player for a solid, I don't know, twelve hours maybe or ten hours. And then did the same thing the next day until we, you know, finished uh, one one run through the game. And then you can do, you know, we found 5% of everything that's in that box, it feels like. This is a tremendously large, engaging, open-ended game. Again, it's that feel of here is a, you know, here is a world. Go explore it. You want right. to go look what's in that cavern over there? Go. You want to sail to that island because you see a weird-looking tree? Go. Do that. You can do anything you want to do. But it also has, again, some solid mechanisms. It doesn't just feel shapeless, which is why I like it so much, really, because I love that exploration aspect of it. And there's much more exploration in this than near and far. But it doesn't feel shapeless. It is still very structured, very clean, the way you do everything. And I like that in games. I don't like games that feel, if anything feels sort of nebulous in it. And sort of, you know, you can make up how you want to do this. No, no. Tell me how. Design it. And this one is a uh, superbly designed game. I really think Sleeping Gods is fantastic. My number one, Tom already said quite a bit about it, Sleeping Gods. I thought this might get up there. I didn't think of that. I didn't know it hit number one. That's but, pretty huh. high. That's yeah, really man. High. It's awesome. That's impressive. Again, well, because, and, and a big part of that is because, not that I, these other games, suddenly this is better, or I like it more than, say, like Claustrophobia or whatever, but the exploration in it is supreme. That's that's really why. You know, it breaks all the way up to, to one. Awesome. Well, it's good to hear because... My number one is also Get Sleeping out. Gods. I've got it wow. set up on my table right here. This game is a masterpiece. I can't, I, I can't give it any more higher kudos than that. I mean, it really is. It, it changed, it's changed my life, honestly. I think about I thought about it for days after I played it. I'm like, I only played it like I was I did a live stream, um, and I think I did five hours, and then I did it the next day for another five, and then I'm like when can I scrape out some time to go back to play this and fit and finish a run? Cause I just want to see everything it has to offer and it has so much. And I thought maybe it's just me, like maybe I'm just overreacting to it, but I think maybe now not so sure. You got number two, Tom, number one, me, number one. And I've heard a lot of people really like this game. So yeah. I'm not overreacting the combat. You didn't even mention the combat the combat is like spectacular. Um, I love the combat the tactical feel of it and the exploring, like the fact that every single time you're like, who can I explore again? I, I want to see what is around the next corner because they did a, I, I'm, I'm impressed that two people, three, it's three people, right? I don't remember the third person either, but Brian and his wife, Mallory mm -hmm. uh, wrote all this stuff. Up so we can give, yeah, we should give the name for sure. Credit. Um, I like the keyword system. That's awesome. Yes, that's great. Where you find a keyword where it says, if you have this keyword, like iron, you get to open this door. Like, 
well, how do I get that keyword? I don't know. I got to figure it out. And that right. is the, that's the, like the first thing I think happened in the game. And I'm like, oh yeah, this is the game for me. I want to explore the entire world. I want to see everything. And there's some crazy stuff in this world that threw me for a loop. And the choices are tough. A like big the, part of what surprised me in it all was actually the humor in the world. Yes. I don't know a, if you've come across a lot of, you know, sort of entertaining or well-written or funny passages, but and we yeah. found ourselves at specific moments just laughing at some of the writing is very yeah. humorous, yeah. very, uh, you know, very well done. I yeah. love that. And they bring your crew to life. They all have different things. Oh, yeah. Did you read all the backstories, everybody, on the back? Of all I read the, all some of them. them. I don't know if I read all of them. They all have something. And the card, yeah, and, and that's an interesting part of the game, too, where you're exploring the characters. They'll come out of the woodwork in some of the paragraphs, right? It'll say something like, yeah. oh, Dr. Uh, Gregory uh, says something, and then you get a piece of his character. Yeah. Um, so it's amazing. I hope he keeps this system alive with more stuff. Uh, there. Yeah, but I, I bet it took a, I bet it took oh, a no. while. He he put I think he put a piece of his lifetime into the I mean like I don't know how plus he painted all this stuff yeah one person painted all of it <laughs> and all the all the item I mean look at this deck this is all unique art <laughs> every card not every card there's a couple dupes in here but it's mostly all unique I don't know, it makes me excited to be a gamer I wish I could express that to people well I have a very anticlimactic number one at this point in time <laughs> so, well you yeah. know. The Seventh Continent. Oh, the Seventh Continent. It's, but it's still it's so good. So these two both dominated our list. I'll both, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's three, two, one. Crazy, yeah. 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 That's kind of crazy, actually. Well, for me, I mean, Seventh Continent for me was three. So three and one. But still, uh, across those two games, hey, if you're, a big, if you're a starting exploration gamer, there you go, you know? Yeah. For me, though, Seventh Continent, I, I, I struggled because I think the story's better in Sleeping Gods, for sure. It's, like, not even close. Right. But the map kind of puts Seventh Content on top for me in the exploration genre. I like... Like, the maps are cool in Sleeping Gods, but you flip to it and you see the map. But here, I'm drawing tiles at them, building the map. You know, you get to see the different things. I don't know. That, there was just something cool about that. It's that fog of war feel, right? Like, as you yeah. walk, you see more. That is cool. I mean, and just you remember playing, like, stuff. old... Uh, Real-time yeah. strategy games on a computer or something, Tom, right? Like, uh, you know, a Command and... Uh, right! Called, uh, command Warcraft. and Conquer or whatever. Yeah. Or Warcraft, and you're walking, and suddenly, like, the fog is backing up because you're walking, and you start to see the edge of a building or something. That feeling, you get that feeling over and over and over in Seventh Continent, where you discover something, and you're like, whoa, what's this? What did I just walk into? Well, there you go, folks. Yeah. Those are our top 10 exploration games. More crossover than I anticipated, but also some games I haven't heard about in a while. Yeah, there's, so some, that, di yeah, there's some different stuff there in the, in the lower numbers. And, of course, yeah. folks, you can... Oh, you know what? Hang on. I'm supposed to tell what the people's choice is. I forgot. I put the poll oh, up people's on choice. Facebook. Yeah, yeah. And, cool. Well, that's uh, a good idea, actually. I did that this morning and did not go back and look at it, so I don't even know what's winning. All it right. is a good that's time to be an exploration sweet. gamer, by the way. Yeah. This For is sure. a lot of hours of entertainment. I cannot wait to play it again. All right, number 10. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Is The Lost Ruins of Arnak. Yeah. I guess there's exploration theme. Yeah. All right, number nine, Clank Legacy. Yeah. I, eh. that's That was close for me, but I haven't finished it yet, so I can't. I feel like I ought to finish the game before I can. That's we true. sort of broke. We broke up last year after, in March, obviously, because of COVID, but. Convention. Number eight, Forgotten Waters. Number okay. seven, Need Near and Far. Number Near six, far. Sleeping Gods. Okay. That's nice. pretty high for it being new. Number five, <laughs> Betrayal House on the Hill. Yeah, yeah, that's valid. A lot of people really like that, yeah. Oh, that game is like always way overachieves that I th think it would have. Yeah, that's like, true. People love it. Yes, yeah. Number four, Arkham Horror, the card game. Because yeah. I guess you're exploring I, through. I, I was close to putting Arkham Horrors on my list, but I did just notch down a little bit. I considered it. Considered it. Uh, there is definitely. A, it does feel like there's a decent amount of exploration. Um, but these other ones gave me that feeling a little more strongly, is all. Number three, Seventh Continent. Number two, Journeys in Middle Earth. 
which is the Lord of the Rings, Mansions That's of Madness. At- Lord of the yeah. And then uh, number one again is Mansions of Madness. A clear winner, actually. Wow, okay. really? Yeah, go figure. Well, I mean, again, that's it kind is. of very similar games uh, to what we said. Actually, some people voted for Subterra, Tainted Grail. Uh, I'm looking down here. Nemesis, Robs and Crusoe, mm-hmm. Room 25, Star Trek Fleet Captains. But is yeah, Mage Knight a lot the of... next exploration game? I, I was like contemplating Mage Knight. Uh, it's a good you, game, but that's not the you you have to ex- explore, but it's not like. I don't know. It's it like didn't you feel found quite... another tower. I, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's more exactly. like... Yeah, I get the... it, so... Yeah. All right, well, thank you, Scott, for coming on the show. If people hey, want to find you me. on the internet, where Good would they go? Good to talk go? to you guys. Glad you're doing okay. Yeah, you where too, people, all the... Where would people go if they want to find you on the internet? Uh, BoardGameGeek.com. <laughs> I've been doing I've been doing um, live streaming on Saturday, on Saturdays. Almost not every week, but pretty much. Uh, that would be BoardGameGeek TV on Twitch. Like, what are you uh, streaming? Like, games? Yeah, just solo play. Cool. All right. And talking. If you want to come talk. I need more people to talk to. Please come to watch. It's hard to stream without anybody talking. I want to, I want to talk and stream and play. I agree. I really you, like you need, the... need interaction. The interaction. Yeah, man. All righty, folks. Thanks for watching. We'll see you <clears throat> all tomorrow. We're doing a live play on the channel. So come back and see us play Shamans. And, of course, other videos going up today and tomorrow. But until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. I'm Scott Alden. Have fun exploring.